Uh, okay, let's, let's have a look. Let's have a look. So, brilliant, I'm recording. Right, so this question, as I said here, the, the ideas of the Enlightenment were the main cause of the French Revolution. Assess the validity of this view. It's not a question like that, that'd be a good stop. Okay, so, uh, by, by, uh, with reference to the years, with reference to the years, 1685 to 1789. Now, there's so many different ways of looking at this question, okay? But I'm going to start by just tackling um, what the Enlightenment was, all right? So, basically, what we used to have was divine right of king, okay? So, government was embodied in the king or the monarch you know it could be a queen okay so we used to have societies that were run by that and really that's a dictatorship because you're born into it right so the more literate a society becomes the less likely they're going to be able to tolerate that okay so if you look in history any example of history where man becomes more literate what you see is that these dictators seem to fall away, except in time, extreme times when people think dictators look good, like the Model 2. So I'll give you an example. Saddam Hussein raised literacy rates in Iraq. He gets toppled, yeah? Saddam, uh, sorry, uh, Gaddafi, another dictator in, in Libya, he raised the literacy rates in his country. He gets toppled, okay? You can't make him smile, but I'll make him smile and teach him what he's doing. Brilliant. Yeah, exactly. And the same thing in the British Empire. In the British Empire, we introduced lit uh, literacy into India and the British Empire ends up getting toppled because we educated countries out of, <laughs> of being colonies. Yeah. So the more literate you are, the more organized you are, the, the greater ability you have to question, the greater ability you have to frame ideas. So anyway, the Enlightenment kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah. With rate with rising literacy rates. And just to let you know, Literacy rates uh, at the time of revolution in 1789 were about 50, between 40 and 50 percent. Okay, so 40 to 50 percent of people could read. Now that's that's a lot of people, which basically means if you live in a village, there's always going to be someone that can read someone else's ideas to you. Okay, so if you can't read yourself, your information is going to be able to get disseminated to you. All right, so. People could write political pamphlets. They would get printed off. People would buy them or they'd be given out. And then the literate people would read them to the illiterates. Okay, so information is being spread very quickly. Now, um, basically what you get is this divine right of king. You get, and basically absolute power of, of monarchs. You get these challenges. And one of the great challenges is uh, Montesquieu. And there's, Adam, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of enlightenment thinkers, a lot of them. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> but you only need to write about three in this. Okay. You only need to write about three um, at the time. So Montesquieu basically came up with this idea that rather than a king having all the power, the power should be separated. Okay. So he comes up with this idea of separation of powers. Okay. So what he says is that you should have. A legislative, like a parliament, okay? Mm -hmm. You should have an executive, someone who's going to suggest laws, which can then get debated in there, okay? And a judiciary. And he believed that the judiciary should be the most important of this. So Montesquieu was, uh, he was French, he wrote in French, and his ideas, these ideas that you see here, they're so influential, they, America basically adopts this as their constitution, yeah? His ideas are basically adopted. Montesquieu's ideas were probably the most popular political philosophical ideas. And one of the most, these ideas are probably the most influential the world's probably seen, apart from Marxism, okay, as a form of government. And actually, I'd say that Montesquieu's dominating because more countries follow a capitalist method, mm -hmm. all right, uh, and democratic method or republican method. So... He also said that these different branches of power should have checks and balances on one another. All right? That they should 
check each other's powers, all right? So he says, like, check and balance is power. So he comes up with, with those ideas, okay, which are really radical because before you've got absolute power, you've got these absolute monarchs, and now you've got someone writing in around, I think, the 1740s and 50s. So this is 40 something years before the French Revolution. So his ideas, they impact the American Revolution. And which is in itself a major cause of the French Revolution. I'm going to tell you why. The French support the American Revolution. So King Louis the 16th, I don't want to branch out too much from the uh, Enlightenment moment, but basically King Louis the 16th, and by the way, he's a useless king. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, so <laughs> really, really poor leader. Okay, he backs the American Revolution with money, which indebts France. So France is in debt, which means when... <laughs> Uh, there are really poor harvests. He can't buy enough grain for his country. He can't borrow because they're already in too much debt. It's a huge problem. It's a major, major cause of the French Revolution, right? I don't want to go into that. too much detail about that at the moment. So Montesquieu, he impacts the American Revolution and France and even Britain, okay? Like many, many countries in the world have this as their constitution today, right? So he's majorly influ influential, but again, more of a longer term cause. He was translated into English. His ideas were translated into English and have had a global impact. Right? So did this cause the French Revolution? I would say yes, it is a it is a cause. It's not the cause. And this is the thing about this question, the main cause. Okay, significance. Right. So another person that comes across, and he's not, I wouldn't say he's in the same league as him, but I'm just going to talk about Marat. Because I think Marat is important in shaping the revolution. So Marat, you saw, I just did that video today. Yeah. He <laughs> is a great advocate of violence. And the thing is about him, that he's on the ground, yeah? So he, he basically says that violence is a legitimate method. And the French Revolution is very, very violent, okay? Um, basically, a, a bunch of French women were starving hungry, and they went... Uh, <laughs> they... they they started this protest march they were joined by a lot of men and they stormed the bastille and when they stormed the bastille they put the i've forgotten his name but the man who's in charge of the bastille's head on a pike they cut his head off and w walked walked around the streets with it yeah no. yeah i know so he's extremely violent so he says that violence is legitimate and there are a number of quotes and he's also in charge of a newspaper he's like the more he's on like he's on the radical wing okay mm -hmm. I think that newspaper was called The Friend of the People, if my memory serves me correctly. He's very radical, um, and he's obsessed with counter-revolutionaries. Like, he's obsessed with people being enemies of the revolution. And so he, for me, shapes the violence of it. But he also said, he writes um, a piece before the revolution on the criminal system, which says that there should be equality of death penalty, okay? And we have the guillotine. So for me... The things that he writes about seems to come into being. Mm -hmm. So he is a more of a short term cause because he's, he's impactful writings in the 1780s. Right. So for me, he's more like a spark. So this is like a longer term cause. This man is more like the spark of a revolution. His writings help spark it. He's influential with the po kind of poorer elements of the French and the bourgeois. Okay. He's, he's a very influential writer um, and he's assassinated himself. Okay by Charlotte Corday, because he basically purged something called the Girondin movement. Girondin, the Girondin movement, okay? He was supported by a radical wing called the sans culettes who are the, the more, the, the poorer uh, elements of the French who wanted to direct democracy, all right? So he's basically really radical. He's on the ground, he's writing a newspaper, loads of people reading his ideas, okay? He's around in the 1780s, for me, the things he write about, they come into being. So yes, he does contribute to the rule of the French Revolution. Um, we've also got a man called uh, John Locke. Now, John Locke is very similar to Montesquieu. Okay, he talks about separation of powers as well, but it's not as radical. 
he basically says like power should be divided by a king and parliament. Now he's English, okay? And you can see in England that constitutional monarchy becomes a real thing, okay? Now he didn't write in French, so this is a limitation. Place like how widely was he translated into French? How how impactful? You know, you've got Marat who's writing French is on the ground. John Locke is around a long time before the French Revolution happens. Mm. Yeah. So, but there are people in France who they don't want a republic. They just want to reform the monarchy. Yeah. No, no this French Revolution, it wasn't inevitable that it was going to be a republic. Okay. So he also, he's like a kind of more moderate voice. He's a more moderate voice of revolution. And he, you know, a lot of people did just want to follow this set of ideas. Now, it's kind of like a losing voice. He does; he's not successful. So, these are Enlightenment thinkers. There, there are many, many more. There's um, another mind guy called Edmund Burke, who's an Irishman. He's very critical of the revolution. But basically, what you need to do in this piece of writing, you need to get quotes from these men who are contemporary sources. Okay, you, you, need, you need at least three. So these are three good people to write about. Okay. I'm actually going to stop that video. I'm going to put this as two videos. Okay. So I'm going to stop that there. More options. Stop recording. Okay. All right, stop recording. So 